So, remote take. It uh, basically allows you to control probes, unmanned probes and unmanned things and uh, in KSP. Now, of course, you can do that anyway if you don't have this add-on. The difference is that without the add-on, the range is unlimited and you don't need an antenna or anything like that. Remote tech means that you need an antenna. Um, you need line of sight. Uh, and if you are out of range, as in this small little green yoke up here, it says no connection here, it goes red, and as you've seen, when you're trying to land a, a probe on the MUN, uh, and you come out, you, you're out of range, as you've seen, you tend to hit the ground rather hard. So my idea was, I'd have GeoComSat1, GeoComSat2, GeoComSat3 orbiting the Earth, in surprisingly, going by their name, geosynchronous uh, spinny stuff, geosynchronous or, um, orbit. I also have for, um, I don't know whether I need them, but I'm just anal about these things, Geosat 4 going round and round uh, on a polar orbit, and Geosat 5 on almost opposite, actually, it was opposite, is it moved? It's very hard to get the ships into geosynchronous orbit, as y if you've ever tried. Over time, things do drift, unless you're right on the ball, and that's hard, even with MacJeb. So, all of these probes are exactly the same. In fact, they were launched in just two launches. I'll show you that in a while. And we have, th all of them have four dishes. One dish talks to other, or two dishes talk to other probes. One dish is set to the active ship, uh, so I don't have to go faffing about and, and repointing dishes at each other and or one dish is pointing at mission control so you've got small controls down here turn all the communications off this is omnidirectional radios they can talk it shows you how they're talking this is dishes directional dishes showing you how they're talking you can turn them all on down here in the bottom right hand, right hand corner that does something else that does something else on the watch out this shows you whether you're connected or not I've never clicked on that, I didn't know that. Oh yes, that's the name of the... Alright, uh, uh, Balloons... Ooh, I can't rename it there, okay, fine. I'll worry about that later on, it's only the little balloon thing. Now you see two yellow lines. Did see two, there we go, two yellow lines drifting off towards the man, where I have another set of probes. Obviously, you may or may not know, you cannot achieve geosynchronous orbit around the man because you're out of its sphere of influence, which means you get flung off into different dar dark and distant places. Look, Gillian Ike, wow, splendid, what's that, Minmus, oh look, Tylo, Bop, but I normally don't get to see them, why am I suddenly seeing those now? What's that mean? So there's a, a Gilly, yeah, uh, you would see it, it's quite close, but Okay, well, well, we'll worry about that later on. Oi! Wow. Whoa! Ah, inside the planet Kerbal. Ah, so we have this. Now, because we can't achieve synchronous orbit, geosync orbit, I have mm, three probes. One going polar, another one going polar but at 90 degrees, and another one going equatorial. Equatorally, equator, going round and round. They're the s exactly the same build. I'll show you the build in a while. Uh, four dishes, one or two set to each to talk to each other. They're actually talking with omnidirectional antennas, and one dish set to mission control, one dish set to the active. So you think that looks really good, doesn't it? You're not going to have a problem controlling ships, but if you look at this. The Tell you what, we'll change to that one. Switch. Wait about 30 seconds. I have one niggle with remote tech, and I'm blaming remote tech. I assume it's remote tech. It's a niggle. It's not a fault. It's a little frustration. Oh, look, that's my pro quick turn off. Um, so there we go. So we zoomed in there. If I try and land a rem a remotely controlled, at the moment, a remotely controlled device on this side of the MUN, it's going to go splat. I made the mistake of not checking 
because I'm inexperienced with remote check. I uh, normally you're used to just landing wherever you want. I didn't check with the remote check that I was going to have a uh, something within range or line of sight and in range of the probe where I was landing. As you can see at the moment, they're all round that side. One will come over here, one will go around that way, and one will go around that way. If I fast forward a little bit, and a little bit more, you can see them not moving really sweetly. And probably round about now, that beast can see the Mun, but I can't see the bottom of the mun because that one can only see up to roughly about there, and that one's over there, and that one's over there. So if I wanted to land on this side, I'd have a problem. So the options are: um, you either cover the entire thing in probes; they're not in geosynchronous orbit, so they're constantly moving in relation relation to each other, or you use omnidirectional antenna, but they're also line of sight. My thinking is the altitude that these are, at roughly 740 kilometers, is probably a little bit too much. If I've got probes going a different uh, if I've got probes at different orbital distances from the MUN, they'll go at different speeds, which will mean they'll, they won't break it. As you can see, they're all tending to stay in the group, they're obviously scared of one another. Yeah, they are actually, aren't they? Now, while I can fix that by re by changing the orbit, I mean, reducing one guy's orbit, it's kind of frustrating, really. It's, there's always one side that's not covered. 